If you're from Belmont, you should be excited about the Chronicle Mill. Uh, this is Chronicle Mill, located in East Belmont. It still employs around 300 to 350 people. This property is a historic uh, property in, in Belmont and, and in Gaston County, and we're going to develop it into roughly 240 apartments, uh, 15,000 square feet of commercial that uh, the community uh, will be part of. And the vision for this property was to, you know, again, have people live, work, and play. And that was kind of our motto. So Belmont's downtown is, is kind of spread out east to west, and we have our historic Main Street downtown, and then we have our historic East Belmont part of downtown. And the Chronicle Mill sits literally in the middle of those two. It's, it's sort of the belt buckle that, that connects those two together. So one of the challenges of our Main Street program in, in downtown Belmont is our lack of new commercial space. Uh, we have this, this wonderful problem that our buildings are full of vibrant, thriving businesses. We need more space for people. We need more spaces for people to live. We need more commercial space for people to work, to open up businesses, to open up restaurants. Starting with a blank canvas is usually a little easier, uh, but this has a lot more character and richness and um, creating a sense of place is authentic. This area is now one of the most exciting places to, to live in the Charlotte metro area, and it's growing. The future is exciting to us, and I know our partners, uh, uh, Armada Hoffler. When this was an active mill, uh, this was the heart of the community. So we're really excited to have the Chronicle Mill revitalized, and it really will be a catalyst for uh, additional vibrancy in our community, just like it once was. to the Building Belmont podcast. If you're a loyal listener, you've been following along, then again, welcome back. And if you are a first time listener, then let me be the first to welcome you. Maybe you're someone that just moved to Belmont or the area, then welcome. We're glad to make some connections and share some stories with you. Or maybe you're someone that's exploring Belmont. We're going to give you a lot of reasons why to call Belmont home. I'm your host, Keanu Trujillo. And today I'm joined by a couple that it's very hard to classify what they do, but most people know them around town as John and Jennifer Church. They are developers, investors, consultants, all things real estate, all things legacy, all things history. So I'm glad to be having you all join me today. Oh, thank you so much for inviting us. Yes, absolutely. Well, you've been recommended through a few different avenues to have conversations because you're heavily involved with the community. Uh, but for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you can see the Chronicle Mill here behind us on the TV. And you two are responsible for making that happen. We will definitely get to that. But as the story that I've been able to put together thus far, you moved here 25 years ago from Houston, Texas, Katy, Texas, to be specific, and almost instantly fell in love with Gaston County and the area. So pick us up from there. What about Gaston County made you say, that's where we want to build our family and build our home? When we um, had an opportunity to move to this area, mm -hmm. we uh, thought uh, we would come out and uh, spend some time here in, in Gaston County and uh, ended up at one of the fish camps and started our uh, journey with uh, where do we want to live if we're going to move here? And mm -hmm. uh, we thought that uh, Gaston County had some of the things and the values that we, we mm -hmm. believed in. And, and one of them was the faith community here uh, with the Benedictines, the Sisters of Mercy. Um, so we found a home at the Queen of the Apostle Church mm -hmm. and um, we um, decided to um, uh, buy a home at Kramer Mountain which is a gated community and a beautiful place. And so it was uh, kind of all fell into place. It really made it easy for us to make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived in Charlotte for, for a while, but that really, I think from our, you know, we're kind of blue class, you know, backgrounds, working class. It wasn't a great fit for us. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't what, what we wanted at the time. Mm -hmm. Plus we had four children, mm -hmm. a blended family. And um, when we moved to uh, Kramer Mountain, the middle school was right behind, brand new middle school. Mm -hmm. So school was there, wonderful community, 
we we just really fell in love with it. So it was an easy decision. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. why we've been here. And I, you know, from a from a business standpoint, I, I thought, well, do you want to be a small fish in a big pond or a bigger fish in a smaller pond? <laughs> and I knew Gaston County was, uh, you know, people. Uh, if you worked in Charlotte, didn't think a lot of Gaston County because at the time it was had a reputation for crime and the, the textile industry was waning. So it was one, it was kind of a county on the decline. From my standpoint, I've been in real estate for you know 45 years now. I saw that as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, let's move there, Jenny. We can buy real estate and kind of make a, a nice retirement for us. So mm -hmm. I was looking 25 years out and saying, all right, I'm working for a corporation now, First Union, and what do we want to do in 25 years? Well, we have our real estate business. So Jenny got her broker's license, and we started looking for uh, things to do. Mm -hmm. And we developed a, um, a shopping center. Just uh, It's literally, a, they call it like a, uh, a driver from my house to the, I can, see the, I can see the shopping center from our subdivision. When I walk our dogs in the morning, we can literally see mm -hmm. where the, it was, so it was real mm -hmm. close. So we, we had like this five mile radius that we operated in, you know, our, our shopping center was just mm -hmm. behind our development. We worked in Gastonia and Belmont and uh, I would commute to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Now we're working full time in real estate and this was one of the projects that mm -hmm. uh, really launched us into the development mm -hmm. business. So Jennifer, what was the first project that you had the opportunity to bring to this blank slate, this this land of opportunity, as you both saw it here in Gaston County? What was the first project? Why? And uh, where is it at now? And we still own this property, and it's called the New Hope Business Center. It's on South New Hope Road near uh, near the middle school, and um, we call it office warehouse space. Um, we've got great tenants in that space and still doing the proper ownership and property management okay. for the New Hope Business Center. And um, yeah, so that started the journey. And so we purchased some other properties along the way um, and we've traded those out. But this one, it's, it's the first, it'll always be our favorite. <laughs> are, are you gonna hold on to that one for a nostalgia purpose since it was the first one? We are, and it, it seems nostalgic to... about the building and nostalgic about my tenants too. Mm -hmm. We have wonderful tenants in that building. You know, life's all about relationships. Yes. And to be able to blend that great business relationship with some of those folks, it, it's, it's been wonderful. Well, I asked Enjoyed a friend it. last week, and I was telling John before we started recording, I asked about uh, what it takes to begin a journey in, in development, mm -hmm. specifically commercial uh, developments. And he said, relationships and capital. Yeah. And I asked, well, what else? And he said, that's it. So did my friend miss anything? What else would you add to that? Because I'm hearing that from both of you. Well, you know, I think you have a passion for real mm -hmm. estate. It's a, it's a kind of a business that I think is people-oriented, obviously, but it mm -hmm. also is um, very dynamic in that there's so many different things that you have to do to make it all happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's one thing to, to maybe buy a property. Mm -hmm. It's another one to develop it from the ground up because... You have to work with the uh, the idea of okay, am I going to bring in partners to help me bring the capital? How am I going to mm -hmm. build it? What, what bank am I going to use? Uh, working with the city and the county to get uh, the the right zoning for it. Yeah. Then how do you uh, design it? And then you're managing costs. And then once you get it built, then you know how do you t tenant it? Because mm -hmm. you know we've we've had uh, situations where we. I've owned real estate and it's been very successful. We've, I've owned real estate that, that hasn't been successful, it's taken two or three years to mm -hmm. lease it up. So you, you get into those market dynamics and complexities that, it, for me, it's really one of the reasons why I love it. It's, and then the people too, I mean, it's interesting because when you own a shopping center mm -hmm. or you own warehouses, mm -hmm. um, the entrepreneurs that you run into that are trying to start businesses that are coming out of their house or their garage mm -hmm. or they, Go from a thousand square foot to a two thousand square foot. You know, you you become partners with them because you know, hey, you, know, you want to start a business. Well, let me. You know, and sometimes we tell people it's probably should. It's not going to work for you. You probably mm -hmm. this is not a good idea <laughs> for for you. Whatever you're trying to get. So one of the first things I know Jenny does is uh, she asks, you know, what do you what do you you know what's your business plan? And the, you know, a lot of times they'll go, what business plan? And you go so. It's just a great industry to be in mm -hmm. because you, you use all your skill sets mm -hmm. and, you, and you have to work with the, 
the, the different uh, municipalities and all the different types of professionals, architects, you know, civil engineers, um, you know, it's just a, it's a great business. We very both, entrepreneurial. Yeah. You know, there was the challenge for us personally, very entrepreneurial, incredibly risk averse. I was the mom that said, no, you will not have a trampoline in your backyard. <laughs> uh, so we eventually came together on that, but that took a while as well. Yeah. So there's a good balance there is what it sounds like. So yeah. what I hear is that what you also need is passion for yes. real estate yeah. because you're going to go through a lot. It's going to take a lot mm -hmm. of time and it's not going to be easy and you're going to go have to jump through tons of hoops. So you better be passionate about it if you're going to get into it. So that's what I heard you say. And then you mentioned that with leasing to your tenants or inviting tenants in that you would almost become like an advisor to them or a business partner with yeah. them. Is that common in the commercial real estate space or is that your heart to serve people? Well, I worked on the debt side of uh, the real estate business uh, for, for 30 plus years for banks and so forth. And when I was, a, when I was managing debt for these borrowers, you know, I always looked at it. I had a partnership with them that borrowed money from my institution that I was working for. But, you know, when something wouldn't work out, they'd come to me and the documents would say, he have to do this and this. So you, you end up working with these guys yes. and saying, you know, well, you can do this mm -hmm. or you can't do that. Or, you know, and sometimes when the bad things happen, like mm -hmm. you can't make your payments. Well, you know, instead of, you know, being the bad guy, say, give me the property back and I'll relieve you of this mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. so again it was just you know yeah during co during covid during pandemic we didn't lose a single tenant wow. because we worked with them yeah because life happens mm -hmm. and so what do you get to do you have the opportunity to work with people create relationships because goodness i would want somebody to give me that same grace yeah absolutely so, yeah yeah so, so we have very loyal tenants many of them have been with us for 15 years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. great people yeah well I, I love that side of it from the service side of it and being involved to a point of you know, doing good business in the lane that I want to see you succeed. And if you succeed, then we get to su succeed together. And I just felt that was encouraging because some of the conversations, honestly, yes, we get to share it, obviously, but selfishly, I get to be the one that sits here and asks the question. So, you know, this interview will exist forever. And I want someone, your great, great grandkids one day to be able to look at that and say, that was the heart behind this, right? How do we carry that forward um, from a legacy standpoint? And we instantly connected. Obviously, we just met for the first time today, been dying to make the connection. Uh, but legacy is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean to you? What is the legacy that John and Jennifer Church hope to leave? And what does legacy mean to you in general? Yeah. Wow. You know, I think that um, for us, I mean, if we use uh, the Chronicle Mill as, as an example, I think that, um, you know, when we, when we uh, bought the property, um, I was in the, uh, uh, the mindset to tear it down, and that was mm -hmm. kind of the conventional thinking. But after we started to, to um, look at it, I go, you know what, this is um, credible history. I mean, the mm -hmm. textile industry uh, in Gaston County has so many uh, iconic figures that you could draw to that built the community, and the amount of capital, the amount of uh, industrial knowledge and, and, and at the time technology mm -hmm. if you ever looked at a, a knitting machine or a spinning machine you realize that it's a very technical piece of equipment and um, these mills uh, had huge amounts of equipment it's one thing to build the buildings which they were built out of um, their post and beam the brick was made on site uh, the wood came from the eastern seaboard mm -hmm. there was a longleaf philippine uh, uh, force that they used and um, mm -hmm. so these buildings were made by typically there was one or two uh, architects that were specialized in them and they built hundreds of these all over the the south and that's how the south turned into the textile industry but you know from a legacy standpoint then you quickly once we quickly we bought this and go like wow we really need to save this so I had I had literally hired a demo mm -hmm. a demo guy to tear the building down and I stopped him we stopped him. Well, he I stopped, probably, he I stopped saw, us, actually. He called yeah. you. George called you. George called said, John, this building has really good bones. Uh -huh. I mean, it's in pretty good shape. Let me paint the picture, because yeah. when we redo the movie at some point, I want it to look like this. John is laying there, and he had decided that he was going to tear it down, and Jennifer yeah. thought that's the economic thing to do. And yeah. You're sitting there in bed, and you're just, you know, you're feeling, you know, churning in your heart that maybe that's not the right thing. And then you get the call, and you, you hear, you know, hey, we can't tear this down. 
But you know, at that moment, the bulldozer cranks up, right? It's just a line of them, and, and they're about to rock and roll. And you see John just run out into the field in his pajamas, like, stop, and he's crying, and Jennifer's behind him. So that's what the scene's gonna look like, okay? That's great. <laughs> well, that's how I envisioned it. But just, to, just, to, just to be clear, we've had about a thousand of those kind of events at our house. You know, when you're laying in bed at night, you know, at different times, Throughout the development process, when you know you, right. you know the weak moments when you're going like, well, I don't know how we're going to solve this problem. Well, let's wake up in the morning and do it. Yeah. But but to that point, it was um, yeah. Uh, George George had torn down 20 mills. Mm -hmm. He goes, John, this is one of the best mills that I've seen. And they and they, and if you mm -hmm. look and read in the history books, you know um, R. L. Stowe would would tell you that we used the best wood, the best equipment. The best, you know, of, of the that they had in the industry to build this mill, and it, and as I, you know, grew to you know learn more and more about it, literally every day, this thing was really built. Uh, Still, family to last. Were very good stewards of this community, yeah. very good leaders Excellent. in this community, mm -hmm. and they, and it was, uh, you know, again, if you get into the textile industry and. And, and if I can get off on the tangents about history because of the, you know, the Lorre Mill and then, you know, they have the, the, the Stowe family were, were, was one of the best mill owners to work for. I think at one time they had 25 mills. And uh, people uh, knew where they, you know, where the best places were to work. And that's why, you know, they became very successful. I think they treated their workers well. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't tell you how many times I had people walk into that mill while I was there working, and they would tell me, you know, about their dad, their grandfather, you know, they worked in these mills and how they were treated very well mm -hmm. by the family. And, you know, um, they'd go down to the general store mm -hmm. every Christmas and they, they get a they get to go and pick out their Christmas presents. They had big Christmas parties at the place, mm -hmm. you know, cowboy what well, was a cow, not Cowboy Bob, but there was a cowboy that, <laughs> that was part of the culture anyway. This, it was just a really, people yeah. that lived in these uh, textile communities, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lived and worked. They had baseball teams. Uh, and if you talk to some of the citizens, you know, they'll tell you that each mill was their own little mm -hmm. cult or club. And, you know, I'm from the Chronicle. Mm -hmm. You know, you come into my neighborhood, you know, you just better not cause any trouble because I'll send you, you know, we'll send you out of here on, you know. So it was a, it was a, it was a whole culture, you know. And, yeah, and it's been a joy to be in the community and listen to all these stories. Yeah, yeah. When I went out at a restaurant and happened to see people and I introduced myself and then they share their stories very openly. It's been, it's been very joyful. It's been, I've, been, I've really enjoyed doing it. So to the legacy point of it, it was there was so much there and how it was built that you wanted to preserve that. And then being able to preserve a place that the descendants or people later on can actually go back and experience it to a degree. So was that the first time that legacy became important to you in your development or is it something that you had always kind of carried with you? You know, um, you know, real estate has kind of a component of, you know, it's a legacy asset. It's an asset that people invest in. And, you know, it's supposed to last for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I think when you, when you get into the real estate business, you're kind of in the legacy business in a way because, you know, you, uh, you're, you become the steward and owner of that property mm -hmm. and it becomes a, a part of you or, you know, it, you, you know, it's a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why, you know, um, you know, when you own a piece of real estate, it's, it's your responsibility to be that steward. So, you know, like I said, when I first got it, I go, okay, well, I'm just going to tear it down. And, and that was, again, I was relying upon local experts that were telling me, go, what do you do with it, John? They go, oh, just tear it down. It's, you know, you can't do anything with it. And I go, okay. So I hired, you know, and, and then I stopped him. And, you know, then you could all of a sudden see what would be the vision for this. And at that, you know, again, and, you know, 10, 15, uh, 20 years ago, you started to see the adaptive reuse mm -hmm. of a lot of the, um, uh, legacy assets. I mean, again, legacy real estate assets. This has been in the community 110 years, and I'm hoping it'll be in the community for another 110 years, and then somebody else will, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for us, it was um, more of a, you know, kind of an economic opportunity. I mean, the idea of owning six and a half acres of downtown Belmont, you know, again, from a vision standpoint, when I saw coming to Gaston County, it's like, hey, there's a lot of opportunity here. Mm -hmm. You go, and that, and that was always the case when somebody says, oh, you own the mill. And I go, yeah, I own the mill. And then, you know, as it 
fell in disrepair and we tried to find partners and the struggle that we had to find the capital to get this thing done, I said, the good news is that you know, we own six and a half acres of downtown Bama. The bad news is that we own a 150,000 square foot building that's deteriorating that needs to be redeveloped. So it was kind of like the yin and the yang, but you know, we were persistent mm -hmm. and uh, we had some good partners. Uh, Dimitri Batches is our partner. He's an uh, urban planner mm -hmm. and he was one of the first people that I hired to help me envision what we could do with this. And he had worked all over the world in major developments from you know, Abu Dhabi to China, and uh, he just had a great perspective. And uh, and he used to be an employee of the city of Belmont. Yeah, he was wow. his first job out of North Carolina. Of North Carolina. So, so here he's come home too. I mean, mm -hmm. he's uh, he's come here and says, you know, he was he worked with Kevin Lofton to help you know get rid of all the telephone poles in downtown Belmont. So he was now a city people, planner. So when They're people say, yeah, department. so yeah. And so he's our partner now, and we're working with him on other projects, mm -hmm. but he's a great visionary. Mm -hmm. And I think for us that once we, you know, started, what, what, what happened during the uh, 70s is that most, if not all, the textile mills had to become more efficient because of uh, NAFTA, NAFTA, and they opened up the market. So all of a sudden, the textile uh, owners had to, they bricked up the windows of all these textile mills, and you'll still see that some of the you'll see the arch windows and all of them are bricked up. The reason why they did that was to become the air condition, conditioning systems were more efficient, mm -hmm. and that the, the, when the air conditioning was more efficient, you could get more uh, out of the cotton. The the the, the quality of the mm -hmm. of the cotton that you produce was better, and the quantity. So in order to increase their capacity, they bricked up the windows. You know, which made them very hard places to work at because when I bought this mill, all the windows were bricked up and, and you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Terrible place to work because the neon lights and the sound and the, you know, the, the, the heat. The heat, oh my gosh. So, so in other words, in order to be really efficient, they had to, to increase the capacity in these mills. And in doing so, they created a kind of a harder mm. working environment. And... Um, but it was one of the things they had to do, and then you fast forward 30 years, and then they all shut down because most of, if not all of the textile industry went uh, international to other areas. So, but you know, one of the great stories about the Chronicle was that Willis Carrier, the Carrier Air Conditioning, he he invented the concept around air conditioning, and he installed one of the first central air conditioning systems in this building in the world. And I, I could I could show you you know exactly where it was installed if you go out to the um, website for the Carrier Air Conditioning Company it'll show the first system, and basically it was installed here at the Chronicle Mill. Amazing. And um, I I could I whenever people came in I could show you where this system was hooked up. It was basically a flue system on the back of the building, which was a, a way for them to push cooled air from the basement up to the higher levels and, and exchange it and keep pushing it through. And they just push the, the air through the water. And that was the beginning of the uh, air conditioning uh, process. And, and was it still there when you purchased the building or had it been removed at that point? Well, all the, all the equipment had, but the flu was still there. And you could see it, 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 it mimicked what they had on the website. Wow. It was really, it's very, you know, and, and again, you just, the building had so many neat characteristics and the longleaf yellow pine floors, the mm -hmm. deck boards, the beams, the brick. You know, each one of those bricks mm -hmm. was handmade. So, so, I mean, and they were fired there on site. Mm -hmm. So it was just full of history. And then, you know, all the, the great inventors, uh, Stuart Kramer, he actually um, termed the word air conditioning at a conference, a textile conference in the South around two, uh, 1912 or so. So the whole term air conditioning was uh, coined by Stuart Kramer, who, as we all know, Kramerton was one of the big industrialists, mm -hmm. inventor, had 45 patents. And um, he, um, you know, air conditioned all these mills that he helped build in the South and um, ended up in Mayworth. They had there in Kramerton, the, the, their mill there, and, you know, was... Uh, responsible for khakis, you know, was worked with, he, he was uh, a, a West Point uh, 
a cadet or you know, in the military, ended up working very closely with the U.S. government, mm -hmm. and, which drove his business. You know, I'm going to add historian to your title, <laughs> uh, you know, next time. But no, it is it is fun to uh, you know. I think what we'll do is we'll have you all back on, and we'll just talk, and we'll see what we happen to come up with, and then we'll just name the the episode after that because there is so much history there, absolutely, and some friends, and you know, there is so much history there, and I, I so badly want to go down that route um, obviously we are in the south and so there's a lot that goes into or behind the mill the cotton and all of those things that i really want to have a conversation about we'll definitely come back to that fast forward fast and fast forward to the chronicle mill and so now you from what you shared earlier began the purchase in 2011 fast forward it's now 2022 tell us about that process to get it to where it is now and your involvement now with the vision of what chronicle mill is becoming we initially envisioned it to be strictly office warehouse and because um, okay. it had really wide floor plates that were completely mm -hmm. open, which would, you know, I had people that, you know, architects that would walk into the building and they'd go, wow, this would make a great office space. So that was our initial kind of idea mm -hmm. that was, you know, kind of an optimist hall with the food courts and, mm -hmm. you know, retail and office. And um, yet that vision was, was very hard to uh, actuate because at the time, West, West County, Gaston County, was not kind of the place where people were looking at for uh, relocating or adding, mm -hmm. you know, office space and retail space. You know, in Charlotte, red hot. Yeah. Gaston County was just a kind of a bridge too far. So during that, you know, from 2011 to 2016, 17, you know, I just couldn't find a partner. I had, I had plenty of partners that wanted to, to make these apartments. Mm -hmm. And I'd always say, no, I don't, I don't, that's not my vision. I think it'd be a highest and best use is what, you know, a real estate uh, development. You know, I've heard you even say that highest and best use. I mean, it's, it Six is the- Six acres in downtown Belmont needs to be accessible to the community, yeah. doesn't it? And so that was the original, that was the vision. Yeah. Is food court, um, event space, yeah. concert venue, boutique yeah. hotel. Yeah, we had it all planned we out. We had it all planned out, and Dimitri did a great job of helping us to do that planning. Um, and that was an exciting concept. Well, I, it, my understanding is you found another building that you're going to get to be involved in to bring some of that vision forward. Uh, definitely more on that later. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you had that vision. Tell me, was that vision before Optimist Hall became what it was, or? Well, Optimus, yes, it was, bef yeah, yes, it was before it was Optimus before, Hall. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, before you started to see food halls in Charlotte. Yeah, White, yeah. Whitehall Partners, mm -hmm. who did Optimus Hall, mm -hmm. were one of the initial investors that was looking at doing it at the Chronicle. The Chronicle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we worked with them for about a year to try to form a partnership to do something like that, and it didn't come to pass. So, the, again, it was kind of like, uh, so they focused on some of the, the mills there in Charlotte, and... and but Optimus Hall concept is really, you know, if you look out into like Philadelphia, New York, a lot of those concepts have been out there for mm -hmm. a long time. They just hadn't been maybe uh, uh, executed successfully in some of the more rural or, you know, the smaller communities. Mm -hmm. In a big city with high density, these things work automatically. You know, they need, they need office space. Mm -hmm. They need, uh, you know, food halls and stuff for the for the, the high density population. They're harder to do as you get farther out into the suburbs because right. people have to travel and it's not in the downtown. So th that concept just, you know, we just couldn't get it going. And then we were very lucky to um, be introduced to Armada Hoffler, who was a REIT out of Virginia Beach that had done, you know, mixed use, adaptive reuse, you know, uh, developments mm -hmm. and, you know, um, when we first met him, uh, we met him, met, met uh, some of the representatives in downtown and they, you know, they said, well, I'm, I got to walk this. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'm going to walk to downtown. And it was a four minute walk. He goes, that was the first check the box. Mm -hmm. It had to be, a, you know, a downtown uh, mm -hmm. property. And their vision was to make it apartments. And, um, and at that point, you know, I, I kind of finally gave up and I said, I think, you know, the apartment market, you know, being in commercial real estate is, is, is one of the strongest, yes. you know, segments of the real estate market. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and we all know now, we hear it every day, apartments and housing is in such uh, high demand. So in some ways, you know, the idea of making this into apartment complex that at that point was like, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
And we also, the mixed use component was that, you know, there'll be some commercial, like here, you'll see we call this Chronicle Green, the green space in front of the lower level. Mm -hmm. There'll be restaurants on the lower level, right, you know, okay. throughout there, on throughout that courtyard. Mm -hmm. And um, then on the main level, uh, on Catawba Street, there'll be the management offices. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. The management mm -hmm. offices, live work, uh, co-working space. Um, all along the street front there. So that's the uh, commercial component of it that um, will, will help activate, you know, uh, the building with, you know, Catawba Street, which is now part of the Main Street. So yeah. for those of you that are listening, you need to join us on YouTube and you can see what we're looking at here on the TV of Chronicle Mill. And of course, you can go to chron thechroniclemill.com and you can see what we're looking at as well. So, yeah, exactly. so with seeing this here then in the live work and getting to this point, I want to go back to partnering with Armada Hoffler. So they purchased the building from you, correct? What is we created a partnership. A partnership, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I wanted, or we wanted to, um, you know, stay stay in as a part of the equity. And so we sold the property with the understanding that we would be partners mm -hmm. and I would hand them the keys as the managing member of that partnership. Mm -hmm. And we would be um, local quote unquote developers. So we're, we're paid to be uh, the local developer. And we work with the city and to help get rezoned, mm -hmm. to get entitlements, you know, the, Part of the challenge with this property was to get, you know, historic designation mm -hmm. for an abatement on taxes, grants for adaptive reuse uh, for properties in uh, uh, downtowns, mm -hmm. and then the Brownfield Agreement, which was the environmental um, uh, incentive that we got from the, the North Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Mm -hmm. So we had to work and get those, those incentives along with the rezoning mm -hmm. and um, we worked out a partnership where you know the mm -hmm. um, we're still a, a, a we're a minority owner, mm -hmm. but still a very active owner in the property. See, I look at yes. the city of Belmont as one of our partners because they walked this journey with us, mm -hmm. you know, from the first development vision, you know, where we were going to make it auditorium, hotel, etc., and they walked through, you know, both generations of these development plans, and were so wonderful to work with. And I think it was new yeah. for them, you know, new concept, new development, so many pieces, sections of this mill. And um, yeah, there you are. Yeah. John. yeah, there you are, John. Yeah, that, that's the younger me, but uh, you know, it, it, it's and it's been, you know, very challenging. We started, you know, literally mm -hmm. two years ago, with uh, the partnership, and you know, at times uh, it'd be on, be off. Started over a couple, you know, started over with a new mm -hmm. contract, you know, during the process. Because what happened is that, you know, as you go through a, a development at, at, on this scale, it, you know, there's a lot of obstacles, mm -hmm. um, you know, parking. Uh, do we have enough parking? Um, you know, I shared this story with a lot of folks. I said we worked, had to work with the uh, Duke Energy. Um, there's not only distribution lines that are on this property, but there's transmission lines. And... For people that don't know the difference between the two, it's <laughs> it's it's millions of dollars. Transmission lines serve cities. Distribution lines serve neighborhoods. And so the transmission lines that were going through this property had been established. Um, one of the first substations uh, when uh, Duke started uh, their hydro plants along the Catawba River, which was another reason why uh, you know, Belmont and Gasson County was such a great place to start a business was this cheap energy. Mm -hmm. You know, close to cotton, abundant, uh, you know, resources, people working, and um, the technology, the, the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So you put all that stuff together and the energy was a big part of it. But, you know, just dealing with the easements and, and, and for Duke Power on this property, we were trying to relocate the distribution lines. and. We would talk with them for six months and realize that it wasn't such a problem with, um, you know, relocating a uh, distribution line, you know, is very expensive in the millions of dollars to move it because we wanted to place the apartments in the, you know, on the site, right? Mm -hmm. But they said it'd take two years to do it. So, I, you know, so we wasted six months doing that dance, trying to get the property mm -hmm. redeveloped and realize that. Well, now we have to rework the layout. And you know, so we went back to our civil, we went back to our architects, so you redesigned the whole thing. So we had a lot of stops and starts. 
you know, traffic studies, um, yeah. things that you just don't think about that become obstacles and uh, opportunities. It, opportunity, yeah. So, so it was, it was, uh, it wasn't a straight line. I, you know, it was like, yes. And 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 with the help, you know, again, the folks like, you know, in the city, you know, they they were really big supporters of ours. You know, Adrian was just a big supporter. He was he was never he was always saying, "We're going to make this work. We yeah. just got to you got to be patient." Yeah. And it took. And, we, and I went to him many times and said, "Adrian, I don't know how." And he'd say, "It's it's going to happen." Yeah. He said, it will happen. And now, uh, yeah. when are you set to open or begin taking in tenants? I believe they're going to take in tenants uh, in August, August, August September timeframe. Yeah, they, the, the management company is hoping to show um, apartments, uh, one in the old section and one in the new. Mm -hmm. This is the old section here okay. and the new section right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, start showing those to potential tenants and they're taking reservations right now. But um, I believe they're going to open a leasing office across the street at 85 Catawba in okay. May. Across the street. Yes. And mm -hmm. is that going to be the permanent leasing office or is that just to get started? Just so to get started. Just to get started. Okay. Yeah. While construction so is still ongoing. This is the new area or the old that is, area? That is, you see with the arch windows here on the left? Yes. That is the oldest part of the building. Okay. And then in the front there where you see the rectangle, that really emulates the addition that was put on the mill in, the 20, in 1925. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the original mill here on the left with the arch windows, those are 1903, mm -hmm. 1906. And then as the uh, factory grew, they pushed the, um, the building out towards Catawba Street. Mm -hmm. So originally it was like a rectangle, 50 by 300 feet. And then um, they added a story to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the original footprint, I think it was maybe 30,000. Mm -hmm. And then they, kept adding on to it over time. Okay. So, you know, it, it ultimately I think it was 120,000 square feet when we bought it, but, and it started out at 30,000. So over mm -hmm. time, it, these oh. sections kept adding and, um, and to see what we have now. And, and on this particular picture, you can see the, the fourth story on the top there, that mm -hmm. was, that's added okay. um, to the mill. And that's the original, you know, mill below it. Mm -hmm. So 1901, so. 1901 slash 1903. Mm -hmm. And so it was very well made, very strong construction. You know, that's what people always so go like, uh, you know, how do you add a story to that? They go, well, it's, uh, it's structurally sound. We can do it and it got all engineered. So okay. yeah, it's, pr it's pretty neat. So, so now you're four months away. Uh, uh, how does that feel for you, Jennifer? Very excited. Yes. Very excited. Yes. I mean, after all of this time, is there going to be a point where you two go move in there for a little while and just take it in? We've laughed about <laughs> we that. We have laughed and had many conversations about that. We're, we're, we're you know, right now um, our family is, uh, um, all our young kids are having kids. And so we've kind of decided we're going to stay here in um, our, our community here and mm -hmm. keep the house uh, at Kramer Mountain and um, not downsize like a lot of folks are. But I think that's going to be a... a part of the uh, demographics of this mm -hmm. is people that are downsizing. Mm -hmm. uh, the average size of an apartment in this building is 730 square feet. Not a whole lot bigger, or it's really smaller than the typical mill house. A typical mill house that was built is uh, about 1,000, 900 to 1,000 square feet. So this is kind of a, a millennial, 70% mm -hmm. of the units will be a studio, one bedroom, and the other 30% will be two bedrooms. Um, you know the rents are going to be anywhere from a thousand to eighteen hundred uh, square foot, which would be the highest uh, per square per square foot revenue mm -hmm. for any apartment in in, in uh, Gaston County. But it's very comparable to what you see in Charlotte mm -hmm. for similar developments. So it's going to be a little higher end uh, apartment complex, but uh, with some nice amenities and. Um, but we but, spend so much time in Belmont. We really do need an in-town apartment. Apartment, don't you yeah. Think? yeah, yeah. Well, but after all that you've done, I think that it would only be fitting to, to really take it in. You know, I'm, I agree. I'm just Thank you. Maybe from my, uh, you know, my, my my younger self, and if I was building that, how mm -hmm. I would want to really just sit in it for a while. Uh, but you you really helped to add to my list for getting into development, capital relationships, passion, and patience. Uh, so after all the patience that you had to to, to get to this mm -hmm. point. 
uh, is very exciting to see. I do want to talk about the uh, retail side of it, the uh, tenants that you're looking for, the vision behind that as well. One, uh, which kind of tenants are you looking for or hoping to attract to Chronicle Mill? And do you have any that are already uh, lined up or signed leases that we can look forward to? Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that we'll have some, um, some retail in here. Again, want to activate it for the community. We always want to do that. And so I believe that they are looking to maybe bring in a brewery, okay. very popular choice, and then maybe, um, maybe, some, maybe some coffee or a small restaurant. You know, the Chronicle Green has that wonderful outdoor space. Yes. Um, very yeah. desirable for any restaurant area. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, nothing firm yet but lots of interest right now. Okay. And so stay tuned with that. Yeah, great. But, yeah. but so, so you have people that already want to move in there Absolutely. now it's finding the right people. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, right I think, yeah, I think that... Um, uh, right tenant mix is always yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that um, you're going to have 240 apartments. So you do the math, maybe 1.5 mm -hmm. average per, you know. So now all of a sudden you're going to have 300 to 400 people in downtown mm -hmm. Belmont that weren't here before that are gonna be living here. So it makes sense that a restaurant mm -hmm. would fit in there very easily. Uh, coffee shop, you know, uh, some kind of a convenience mm -hmm. uh, component to it, whether, you know, you can go in and buy some carry out wine, you know, sandwiches, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that lower level is roughly about 8,000 square mm -hmm. feet. So 6,000 square feet right in front of you, which could, which could house one or two restaurants mm -hmm. and or, you know, like a brewery. Mm -hmm. To your right here on the very lower level at the corner is that another 2,000 square feet, mm -hmm. which could be a restaurant or a convenience kind of a, a food, uh, coffee, whatever, uh, still on the Chronicle Green. So um, those components right there, I think, are going to be activated with food and, um, you know, uh, to support the, 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 the property and, and the, the new downtown neighborhood. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the Catawba Street level, um, it'll It'll be, um, I think, one of the unique things that there is that uh, is a live workspace. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that's new. It's new for new yeah, Bethesda County. It, yeah, it's, so tell uh, me about that mm -hmm. live work. What do you envision being in that space, where someone lives and has there their office go. space? Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's exciting opportunity. On the on the street level, it's roughly a thousand square feet, mm -hmm. but below would be their living unit. So, okay. you know, so and, and roughly another thousand square feet. So that's a 2,000 square foot unit where an artist mm -hmm. could be attorney. It could be a uh, insurance agent, okay. somebody Account, that accountant. I'm thinking about, you know, someone Small that maybe space. does business coaching and consulting, mm -hmm. has a couple of podcasts. Yeah, there you go. Like yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We, we, we were, I think it'd be perfect. Uh, I'd like to explore Pilates that. Body studio. Think, per, you know, per, Yoga personally. studio. So the, 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 the live portion will be above the workspace or below, below. the workspace? Okay. And then these will be uh, other apartments. Yeah. Okay. And what that you have, yeah, what you have is that uh, they took what, they took off 40 feet of the front building in order to narrow the building so they would be more uh, uh, conducive to apartments. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said because when when you really looked at the floor plate, it was just this huge, wide open mm -hmm. space, like you'd see in a typical office mm -hmm. space. So in order to make it apartment friendly, they took forty feet off the front, but then below that is a walkway garden area that's going to connect from the down, you know, from the Catawba Street all the way to Chronicle Green. Mm -hmm. So you can't really see it here, but there's um, the steel beams that the original building. And you mm -hmm. see those columns that look like a fence? That's the original front of the building. Okay. So the front of the building, they took off mm -hmm. all that 40 feet, and so they got this beautiful open space and catwalk, which you can kind of see in the background there, that works on, on all the fronts. So that's all open, so the people that are, have the lower level apartments will have an outdoor space. So it's... Um, um, I think in Savannah you see a lot of that where they have the two or two story, mm -hmm. you know, walk above, business below, all open, garden, sunken you know, garden, sunken gardens. Well, you know what I like in be, what's being created here after what you were sharing about what it was like to live or work in the mill, that the mill was kind of your home, right? So I'm mm -hmm. from Chronicle or I'm from Loray or what have you, that you're recreating that essentially, yeah. but mm -hmm. you have your own economy and home and community all within the mill. Is, yeah. I assume that was intentional, mm -hmm. correct? Well, and, and that's what, you know, that's why you need partners like uh, Armada Hoffler. I mean, they're professional developers. They have their own construction mm -hmm. company. 
which I thought was a big advantage because they know how to, um, you know, build these things and keep on budget. Mm -hmm. For example, we started building on this project in April of last year, and here we are, April of this year, mm -hmm. and it's 85% done everything. So, I mean, it's a, it's an amazing accomplishment, mm -hmm. especially in this environment. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the, you know, one of the one big roadblocks that we ran into was that we were, you know, put the partnership together. We're all ready to close. They're, uh, they're a publicly traded company, so they're out announcing the project to all their investors. And all of a sudden, COVID. Stock market crashes. Their stock goes from eighteen dollars a share to eight you know so all of a sudden the world's in financial or you know lockdown chaos and i go are we going to close this deal and is it even going to get done because you just didn't really know i mean mm -hmm. people are talking about the economy i mean they were shut down for six months before they went back to the offices you know in some places you know they're obviously still dealing with that but it's worker shortages the lumber costs went way up you know Work it, but they got this thing done, and and, I'm, and seriously, in less than a year, that's a, an amazing. But that's what you bring when you get people that have these. They've been doing these projects in the Northeast, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Boston, and so they brought all that expertise and that know-how, and I'd say ingenuity to get this thing done quickly because there's a lot of projects that aren't getting done mm -hmm. for all the reasons that you mentioned, for you know labor, uh, material costs, supply chain issues. Um, so to start this project a year ago and to get it done has been an amazing accomplishment. Well, I'm glad to see it now from where it, where it was to where it mm -hmm. is, but also you know your story and capturing your story. This platform exists for stories, connection, mm -hmm. and information. And we did all three very well here. And it sounds like from uh, what you all are doing is you're preserving the story of Chronicle yes. and also making connection in the people that will call this home and the legacy that uh, you're creating behind this. So I'm, I'm excited that we had the opportunity to capture this story today and also share information. So is there anything other than you're, you're taking on tenants now, you're looking for the proper tenant mix mm -hmm. as far as people to lease for businesses, is there anything else that you or your partners with the Chronicle Mill need or want to share with the community before we go? Well, I mean, I think that um we're, we're happy to be able to bring it to the market. So that's, you know, getting it mm -hmm. done in a short period of time. And then also to, um, you know, create uh, another uh, corridor. You know, Catawba Street is, was kind of, you know, it's just uh, wasn't being utilized. Now our main street is going to go from, you know, downtown Belmont mm -hmm. all the way to the river. So I think we were one of the first... Uh, uh, major developments that's going to connect that. You're going to see a lot of stuff happening in East Belmont. Mm -hmm. And so this is just, this was the original catalyst. Is people can now vision it themselves because mm -hmm. like our original vision didn't work because it was just maybe this, it was the, the market wasn't there. But today people come to Belmont and they, they don't, uh, they get it. I don't have to, when I used to say, do you know about Belmont? And they go, no, tell me the story. That was five mm -hmm. years ago. Now, I said, they come to Belmont. And I said, you know, do I need to tell you what's going on? And they go, no, 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 we get it. We get yes. it. So but, that's, that's, that's. But what they may not know, and I'd like to share, is that Belmont is such a welcoming community. So for the new residents that will be living here at the mill, it's a wonderful place. place to be. So much to do. Beautiful downtown Main Street and ex so many activities. Um, it's, it's yeah. one of our favorite places to it's be. Fun place to live. Yeah, it's Absolutely. fun place to live. Yeah. Well, it definitely is welcoming. You know, this platform couldn't exist in most other places, right? Building Belmont, and that's because of the people. Uh, yes, there is opportunity there, and, and I'm glad to have this conversation. But this platform would be a hobby uh, to most other people. But here, it really is catching fire because of that. The community is so welcoming to connect with other people. So I agree. Uh, you know, my wife and I have been here for about three years now, and we've decided we're going to build our family, our life, and our legacy here uh, so you know you're definitely on point there and I'm excited to see who we happen to invite into the neighborhood now so thank you for your time thank you for all you've done for the community and for the legacy of Belmont and we hope to have you on again thank you. Absolutely. thank you for joining us for another episode of the building Belmont podcast I'm your host Keanu Trujillo reminding you to subscribe rate and review on your favorite podcast platform be sure to like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. And of course, share with a friend, share with a neighbor. We'll see you again next week as we capture more stories, create more connection, and share more information here on the Building Belmont Podcast.